Hello and welcome to Lily Random, Random, the show where we do just that. Today we have special guest star Brian Brushwood. Uh, he's mostly known as a magician and a magician on Scam School, which you can find on YouTube as well. Uh, so our first question for you is tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, that way if there's anybody watching that doesn't know who you are, they can get an idea. Sure. Uh, look, I've done 15 years all over the United States. I've performed in every state uh, in the continental U.S. at colleges nationwide. And then I started doing Scam School, a show out all about how to score free drinks. Out of that came uh, the TV show Hacking the System. And now I'm doing uh, The Modern Rogue with my buddy Jason Murphy, where we are on a quest to become the ultimate gentleman's warrior and scoundrel. Okay, um, can you tell us a little bit about Scam School and how it's different from Modern Rogue? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Uh, well, Scam School was, in the beginning, the, the idea was if, if Harvard had a PhD in deceit, what would it look like? What are all the things you would know? You'd be able to, you know, scam the girl's phone number, get your way backstage at concerts, you know, talk your way into anywhere, score free drinks. That, that, that was all the domain of Scam School. Um, the Modern Rogue... It was interesting because once we started uh, uh, selling some like really clever stuff on scamstuff.com, we started calling it Gear for the Modern Rogue. And the more we thought about it, it was like, what is a modern rogue? And, and we realized that it's these archetypes of, of the gentleman, warrior, and scoundrel. And Scam School pretty much covers the scoundrel side, but there's still so much that we don't know how to do and, uh, and that we want to learn how to do. So it's like now we're shooting episodes where we're going to be blowing up cars, where we're going to be – um, uh, uh, doing performing stunts with them and all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. Uh, now, for magic wise, have you ever completely failed a trick in front of an audience? And well, if so, what was the experience like? And more times than I care to admit, there's this one mind reading trick I do that one out of every hundred times, and it might be a technological failure, it might be a situational thing, might be that somebody moved a thing when I wasn't looking, might be that they're not paying attention, but for a fact, it's an eight minute long comedy mentalism routine, and at the end of it, I don't get to know if they've done it right or they've done it wrong until the very end, and, uh, and you turn around these two pictures and hopefully they match, but one out of a hundred times, they just flat don't, in which case, after eight minutes of doing a psychic experiment, I just turn to the audience and say, and that's why I don't believe in ESP. And then they clap, and then we go on with the show. <laughs> and they're like, that was a really weird uh, uh, piece of performance art, but whatever. So um, what are your thoughts on those TV magicians where they wear the masks and they try to tell everyone how the tricks are done? Uh, man. Um, those those were a real bummer, and I you know I, I had just gotten started in magic when those hit um, national television, and to me the real crime was not in trying to educate people about magic. I think a lot of people want to get into magic, and I think it's important to keep magic alive. You have to have more young, talented people enter the art. Uh, to me, the crime of that show was just the dismissive attitude that they acted like anyone who enjoys magic is a sucker. And uh, uh, that I really took issue with. It was a real bummer that that's how they went. And obviously it worked. I mean, it's one of the most you know, successful television specials of all time. But, uh, but it certainly didn't paint magic in a very positive light. And although there are some people who say they got into magic because of it, um, I, I can't help but wonder how many more would have, would have joined if, uh, if magic were portrayed a little more positively. Mm -hmm. uh, so... There's almost every episode of Scam School is really good, and I enjoy all of the ones I see. But I'm wondering, what is your least favorite episode? Oh, that's interesting. So I know that, that at the time, I thought it was a disaster of an episode. It was very, very early on, and it was before I learned how to trust the edit and, and realize that the story comes through. Uh, it, was, it was a trick where um, – in order to make a dime fall into the neck of a bottle, you, you had a broken toothpick on it. You had a dime sitting on top. You couldn't touch anything, and the dime had to go in the bottle. And the method was you, you drip a couple of drops onto the wood. The wood swells. The, paper, uh, the, the toothpick straightens itself out, and then the coin drops in. Unfortunately, uh, it takes a long time for that to happen. Like you're sitting there for a long, awkward time, and the jokes are, are, are being made, uh, and – 
you're you're trying to stay focused on it but uh but ultimately when that episode came out they once you have all the boring parts edited out it was a short little four minute episode i'm like oh that's cute that's great that's great it's great and ever since then i just learned to uh to trust in the uh, in the edit okay so are there any magicians that you really admire and look up to as another magician Oh, sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look online, there's a letter that uh, I wrote to Teller when I was 19 years old, just starting in magic, and I was really frustrated and looking for advice. So I, I, I had the counterintuitive ploy of, of telling him that I was furious at him, and, uh, and it's his fault that I can't do the magic that I want. And uh, what I got was this amazing four-and-a-half-page essay that he wrote in response with really the blueprint that I was to follow for the next 20-plus years as I developed uh, my stage show and stuff. Uh, uh, Teller has been, you know, this, uh, I mean, a mentor in, in, in so many artistic ways that mattered so, so much. So I'd say, you know, when I was in second grade and I first saw Penn & Teller, I had seen magic be amazing before, but I'd never seen it be cool before. I've never seen it be punk before. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you have a website where you sell a bunch of things called scamstuff.com. What is the item you would recommend the most that is currently on there? Ooh, that's oh. tough because it goes all the way like at the very, very high end. If you're a touring professional magician, uh, the best trick I ever wrote was my, my book test trick, and that's available on there, but it's a gazillion D dollars. Um, meanwhile, one of, a, one of the things that seems to be most popular is this, uh, it's, uh, we got two things. One is a, a lighter that uh, lights with an arc of plasma. You actually start fires with lightning bolts using this thing, it's USB rechargeable. And then the other is what we call um, uh, th th this, this way to awesome up your, your wallet. And uh, it, it comes with a, a multi-tool, a, a credit card folding knife. And as we've talked about on hacking the system, a get out of jail free card to try to talk your way out of a speeding ticket. So um, what are some, what's some advice that you could give to some other YouTubers about doing their own channel? Uh, when it comes to YouTube or any kind of publishing, regularity matters more than anything. You want to work yourself into their weekly routine. They know that Fridays are special because every Friday morning there's a new Modern Rogue episode or whatever. And, it, and you know, if, if it's – there's there's no – sorry guys this one's late came out the next day or any of that it's like no it's got to be there on time every time and also a lot of people have so many filters up they're so afraid of screwing stuff up especially in an age where once it's on the internet it lives there forever uh really there's only one of two outcomes either you're going to be good or interesting at the very least in which case it'll do well and you'll be glad it did well even if it's a massive failure um and everyone's laughing at it they're still looking at it uh or you're going to, the worst case is you're going to be boring, in which case nobody's going to click on it anyway. So it'll sit there quietly until you try to run for president in 40 years. So our final question for you uh, is where can people find you online? Like uh, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. Yeah, I'm a lot, I'm a lot, I'm best at Twitter. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm better at Twitter than I am even at email. Uh, but uh, twitter.com slash schwood, uh, there is no C in schwood. It's just S-H-W-O-O-D is probably your very best bet to keep up with stuff. But of course, uh, most of the projects are up at schwood.com. That's S-H-W-O-O-D. And um, the, uh, uh, and of course, The Modern Rogue. If you go to themodernrogue.com, you can see all the episodes. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this really meant a lot. Uh, check him out, all those places he just said. Again, he has the show Scam School, which can be found on YouTube as well. Link so. in the description. Yes. Um, thank you for watching. Commenting. Liking. And subscribing. Hashtag Dev did it first. Have a really, really, really random day. day.